Hello guys, my name is Amit and welcome to my channel. In this series of Mastering Kubernetes, we are trying to cover everything from basics of Kubernetes to advanced concepts, real world knowledge and the hands-on experience. But to do that, we need to have the Kubernetes cluster ready. In this video, we are trying to install Kubernetes cluster using Vagrant as a virtual machine generation tool, VMware as a virtual machine provider and two virtual machines, one is master and one is worker. So let me show you all the steps which are necessary to install Kubernetes cluster on those virtual machines. Let us start. I have both the virtual machines ready, a master here and a worker here. We need to configure them by using different commands. I already have noted down all the commands in this GitHub repository. I'll keep on updating this repository with all the scripts that I'll be using throughout the sessions. This is the day zero where we are trying to configure the Kubernetes cluster using cube ADM tool. So all the scripts, all the instructions, all the commands which are mentioned, which are needed, we are, they are mentioned in this particular directory. There is a Vagrant file which is used for creating those virtual machines, which I showed you earlier. If you want, you can use that as is. The only problem here is you might not have this Ubuntu image on your machine. This is the custom image I made by using VMware. I'll create a different video to show you how do we do that. This can be automated, the process which I'm going to show you, showing you right now, this process can be totally automated by uncoming this line. I don't want to do it at this point because I want you to understand what we are doing. So going back here in the scripts directory and I can find there are two shell scripts, one for common which is like used for both of them and there is one for master, you know. When I say one for common, it's like I have to execute all the instructions in both the machines and master instructions will be executed only on the master. So let's start configuring both of them. The first section is where we are creating two variables. One for Kubernetes version, which is 1.31, the latest one right now. And the other one is the cryo, which is the container runtime, uh, which is using version 1.30. So let's declare both these variables here. This one here on worker, this one here on master. We have to execute both the instructions on both the machines. Then we are going to s uh, turn off or disable the swap which is needed for the installation. Let's turn this off. Let's create uh, something like kubernetes.conf file to load these two modules. There is a module called as overlay, which is going to provide the overlay file system. And there is a BR net filter. This is used for networking stuff. So let's copy this in both the machines, on worker machine and on uh, the server or master machine. Let's load both of them. Mode prop is the command which is going to load the modules. Mode stands for module. Probe means probing or loading both the modules. Execute them on master. Execute them on worker. Then we need to set some networking properties uh, for sysctl. So copying this, pasting it here. Copying this, pasting it here. Okay. Let's uh, use the sysctl command to set all the flags which I mentioned in those files on both the machines. Next, we are going to install the uh, or we are going to update the, app, uh, the apt cache on both the machines. And then we will install all the prerequisites here. We need the transport HTTPS, CA certificates, curl for testing uh, or downloading the keys also, GPG for installing the keys and software properties common. Let's copy this, paste on both the machines and get them installed. I already have installed them to save our time. Okay. So now let's continue further and let's uh, start installing or let's start configuring the keys and configuring the dev resources for downloading the cryo. So this is going to download the key and get it installed. Yes, please. And do the same thing for this. It will take a minute. It's downloading that key. This key will be used for enabling our apt resource, uh, sorry, apt source for uh, downloading the cryo. This is where we are going to add the source here. It's added. Let's add it here on master machine also. Wonderful. Now that it is added, let's update the cache and install cryo on both the machines. So this is going to get updated. Now we are installing cryo. Cryo is a container runtime. Yes, it's done on the worker. Let me install cryo on this machine. Okay. Let's come back here. It is also done here. Let's install cryo on master machine also. So master and worker now has got the container runtime installed. So now the container runtime is there. Now the time has come to install the Kubernetes components. So let's go for this. 
this is where we are um, i mean because the cryo is loaded we we are going to uh, daemon reload the sys system ctl that is the system d cache and then we'll enable cryo right here enable command will simply uh, you know install uh, the uh, or rather start the cryo service at the moment and it will also enable it for next boot as well so it's done let's continue further this is where we are going to install the keys necessary uh, necessary for uh, installing the kubernetes components i'm getting a permission denied error okay let's go back and let's try to modify this and say sudo sudo here it is so let's uh, say sudo you don't have to do it because i'm going to commit these changes commit the changes now so when you find this you will find the latest one so coming back here copying pasting here and i think we need to paste it on other machine also it's going to uh, it's going to download the key and then it is going to add the kubernetes source for our app cache that's it now we'll install the kubernetes component let's update the app cache and we'll install the kubernetes components right now we are installing cubes uh, kubelet cube ctl and cube adm out of them cube adm will be used for uh, setting up the cluster uh, cube ctl will be used for communicating with the cluster all the commands that we will need to communicate with the cluster will start with cube ctl and kubelet is the service or you can call it as an agent so that the master and worker can talk to each other so let's go here install all of them in the next session we'll talk about how do we get or what is the meaning of those tools and how those tools will communicate with each other and how the node architecture is given by kubernetes today we are just going to do the installation part okay once it is done the last command here it is going to hold the version that we have downloaded so if something gets updated behind the scene i don't want to update it on my machine sometimes it is very risky to update the getting the automatic update for those tools you know i don't want to break my cluster so it's better we can call aptmark hold the version that has been downloaded so it will not update it automatically so precisely we are uh, disabling the auto update for these features okay so let's hold the current version and we are done so precisely now both of these machines are having the container and time as well as the kubernetes components now we have to move to the master only and then we have to create the cluster okay so to create the cluster we are going to head towards the master.sh okay here we are getting the node name this is the variable that we are going for this variable will tell me what is my master uh, what is my node's name so if i look at docker uh, sorry uh, dollar uh, node name this is nothing but the master we can directly hard code this also but it's better to go for it then we are uh, setting up the pod cid this is where we are uh, setting up the ip address or the network which will be used by my cluster so all the pods that i'll i'll be creating will get the ip address in this series 192.168 something dot something uh, let's go and uh, download all the images required by kubeadm uh, kubeadm uh, command which is going to be used for setting up our cluster this is not really necessary because when you are going to install this command or when you are going to go with this particular command this automatically will download it but doing this will automatically save or automatically download everything and save your time okay so seems like all the images have been downloaded now let's go to the last command which is going to create our cluster this is where we are getting the private ip address of our machine so at the moment if i look at um, ipa i can also get it hard coded which is like 172.16.140. 133 it is giving me an error while getting the eth0 no worries i'm going to copy this and say master private ip which is going to be equals to this so you can also set it if it is giving an error no worries so i'm going to go back and set up my cluster by using this command this is the last command which is going to set up the actual cluster so if i look at this command we are calling the cubes uh, adm in it in it for initialize we are initializing our cluster with api server advertise address when i say api server this is the main component which is going to ex uh, expose all the rest apis of kubernetes where is it loading or where, where where it is going to start it is going to start on this machine whose ip address we just have hard coded here 
API server set as sorry extra sands. This is for again the same machine. Pod network CIDR. We already have configured that earlier in terms of uh, I think 192.168.0.0 uh, .0 series. So all my pods, all my objects inside my Kubernetes cluster will get that IP address or that series of IP address. This is the node name that we are using right now, which in our case is the master, and we are ignoring any of the errors that we are getting on our machine at the moment. So it seems like everything has worked fine. This is the last message that we are getting. Uh, this is the success message. Everything is working fine. Now you can execute this command to add the worker inside this cluster. But before we do that, we have to configure this one more time. This is like we are configuring or we are asking kubectl to connect to our current cluster. So this is where we are executing or we are creating our dot cube directory, copying the admin dot conf, which is like the it has the configuration which are used in this particular cluster and uh, we are asking kubel uh, kubectl to connect to our current cluster last command we are owning that file see a uh, cube that's like a uh, dot cube uh, config okay so now if i go back and say kubectl get nodes here i can find there is master machine which is not yet ready why is it not ready because we have not installed the uh, something called as the network okay let's go and install this this is the last command where we are going to apply the calico network plugin so let's go and install this it will take a minute or two by the time it is getting installed i'm going to copy this command somewhere here which is having a token which is used for adding that worker machine into my kubernetes cluster so co i've copied that let's use this command watch sorry watch minus n1 and let's keep on getting kubectl get uh, let's say nodes so this is where it is saying master is not yet yeah, not ready yet it will take some time it is installing that network plugin by the time i'm going back on my worker machine and executing i'm sorry executing this command and this is going to uh, ask worker to join my cluster which is having that token here you know i'm sorry it is asking me to be a root to execute this command no problem let's do it now it says a uh, worker has been added to that cluster if i look at this it was having only one machine earlier master now it has got the worker also uh, both of them are not yet ready why are they not ready because behind the scene the calico network plugin is getting installed you know this command that we executed earlier it is installing the calico network do not worry about anything we'll talk all of these things in details as and when we move further seems like master is ready now it will take a minute or two max to get the worker also ready and then both of them will start talking with each other we will wait for worker to get ready okay so seems like worker is also ready so if i control c quit this command and uh, look at a uh, cube ctl and uh, get all at the moment there is nothing but the kubernetes service this confirms that our cluster is working fine this seems like everything that i'm expecting from the cluster is up to date and if i want i can start creating all my kubernetes objects which we will keep on doing it in the next upcoming sessions thank you for watching this video guys in this video we have seen how to create a kubernetes cluster by using cube adm there is another way you can create a cluster by using mini cube but that is a subject for another video so i'll see you in the next video in the next video Thank you.